Today we're going to be looking at virtual meta fields, and these are fields that are not stored in the database. Now, the primary reason that I've always used these in the past is to render um, a, a, a render a metadata field in a different way in a different context. So um, let's have a let's have a quick look at that. So we have, if we go to a, a browse view, so this is just a repository that's had the standard test data brought into it. So let's take a field and we'll take just kind of a, a, a simple value here. So let's take the title and let's say what we'd like to display in some context is this title in all uppercase, um, but in other context, the title um, in uh, its standard title case. So how we go about this, what we're going to do is create a virtual field. And we'll create all of the files, all of the configuration, we need to do this in a single configuration file in config.d. Um, what should we call it? Uh, caps title.pl. What was the function called? We did this last time. Add dataset field. So we're going to create our field. Its name is, let's copy. somewhere else and we're going to set the virtual flags it's not multiple but it is virtual and we're going to call it Caps title. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put a render function on this. And now then, to find out, I always forget what the arguments are, but to find out, let's have a look in. Prolib. Render value. So, if the if the um, so we're in, a, we're in the meta field um, prolib. The, uh, so this is the superclass for all metadata fields, and the render value method, if if the meta field has a render value property, we're going to call property render value, and these are the things we're going to pass to it, the, the, the arguments we're going to pass to it. So I just need to copy those out. And capture them. course it's not self it in this context would be field it's not going to have a value but we should always make sure we pull all the arguments through. I've seen a lot of people when they when they a lot of examples only have these three arguments, and people forget that actually these are important. And the key important one that we care about is the object one, and this is going to be the eprint. Oh, we let's rename that. So 
So then when we're rendering the value, what we'll do is if the title is set, we'll do something else, we'll do something else. Now I traditionally I call a variable that's just collecting text or R, I don't know why, Chris Gutteridge, there's Chris Gutteridge's practice, I don't know why I call it that, but it's a habit. And if we're going to return imprints utils, no, it's um, actually whenever you see session in your code, session is the old style. We're going to rename that repo repository, which is the new style. So that's always a very good practice. Um, and it is make text node, I think. We'll see if that works. Um, and this converts our text into a DOM object. So let's just actually check that on the ePrints wiki. Sure, it's make take nodes. Uh, create text node. So, create text node. Good, good. We're going to put All in caps, of course. Uh, R equals um, the UC in Perl. So that should, if we now edit the Putting title caps here. Is it title caps? Caps title, wasn't it? So then we need to restart the web server. Oh, let's run EPM and test. Everything seems okay. So now we'll run gen, uh, refresh uh, abstracts and what the, well, actually we need to restart the web server first. Restart the web server and we will run refresh abstracts and that will regenerate them all. Oops. With the repository ID. And so we have Hopefully, we don't have. Who don't we have?
think I might know why this is. Uh, that's right, that's right, yes. Um, um, summary page. The problem is with testing it, it will always test as false because it has no value. So on the summary page citation, we have this loop that goes through each of the fields in that list I've done. And if uh, if it is set, so what we'll do is we'll just we'll just poke it in there by hand, and we'll come back to that problem later because I do have a solution for that. Um, now we really should create a phrase, but let's just put it in here as text. We don't need to do this whole function call style. We can just say the field name. Let's try that again. So we have this virtual field that this is just generated on the fly, it's not stored in the database. Uh, this can be useful in a number of situations, but we can't actually get a value from it. If we try to, with a bit of API scripting, if we try to get a value from this, it would fail. Um, so <coughs> let's do a quick API script to demonstrate that because that would be useful for the next section. In the next section, we're gonna talk about how to create values with, with with these. So um, test value. And again, we can very easily refer to the wiki, the core API, very handy. refer to that page all the time because I forget the exact form of the API. Um, let's just get ePrint number one. So what we're going to do is three tests. We're going to output rendered value. We're going to test value and we're going to So, uh, print let's see if that works. in it, but I suddenly realized that 
So I should put the repository name in here. Live coding. Right, so we have our capital title coming out here. And I guess this is actually the first time I've done uh, API scripting on the command line in my video. So that's exciting. So then what we're going to do is we're going to say if blueprint is set. check that that works. So here's the value rendered, but it's coming up as not set. And to output the value, we're going to this won't work. But this script will come in handy a bit later on. So we get, we get the title, we get the message is not set, and then we get this uninitialized value and concatenation on 29. If we go to line 29, that is this line here. Um, and we can see that that's the one where we're trying to concatenate this value with uh, a new line character. So we will come to that script later. What I want to do now is talk about if we actually want these virtual fields to create a value, how do we do that? And I've been having a look through the ePrints code base, and there are a couple of fields that do do this. Because if we if we look at how um, how render value is called, so if we and let me take you through the steps in, in, in getting through to this. So if we have a look at metafield.pm, um, so the value function is, oh, wait. Sorry, it's um, data option. You call get value on. And the new style is value, which just calls get value. What we do is we call uh, get value on a meta field. So if we now have a look at meta field, we have. Uh, this function here, and that calls get unsorted values, uh, which handily is just here. And get unsorted values goes to the database and calls get values in the database. So if we have a look at the database, get values, the first thing that happens is it checks, is this is a virtual field, and if it is, it just raises an error and returns empty, which will evaluate as false. So um, calling get value on something will always return, on a virtual field, will return a, um, a, a, an empty value, uh, which will be, if we now have a look at on a data obj, is set 
is set works by first checking the field name exists, and if it does, it gets the value and checks to see whether it's set. So any um, virtual meta field will always return false if it is set. However, if we have a look at the meta fields, some of them are virtual. So sub object, for example, is virtual. And sub object gets around this by because you can get a sub. A sub object is where you have a field that references this object, um, and that's where the connection is maintained. But in this parent field, um, we want to, to kind of simulate this followable link from one to the other. So if we if we have a look, we've got this function is virtual, which always returns one, and that's another way. Uh, 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 of uh, this this setting virtual in in a in a um, in a meta field type is just to set this one and this will override any in any attempt to set it as uh, as not virtual in the configuration um, of the field. Um, but when you look at the get value method and the set value method. Um, these are functions that do things. So this function is going to do a search to find things that refer to this, and then it will return that as the data. So if we created our own, and I'm actually somewhat surprised that this doesn't exist. Uh, I guess people are now talking about wanting this functionality, but we haven't been doing it before. So let's just create that now. And I have to warn you before I do this, I haven't done this before. I've got a good idea how to, um, but things may not go smoothly. But we'll just press on regardless. This may end up being my longest video yet. So after a bit of looking around, um, I figured out what I need to do. And I need to make a, a local uh, oh, no, let's go up to lib. Plugins, prints, fields. So if I want to do this in a way that's going to let me make it into a bizarre package, um, I have to, again, put it in the lib plugins directory, even though it's not a plugin. This allows us to um, uh, create a, a new meta field type, which is going to be virtual with value one. Copy some code across. And then we should just need the get value function. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and put in my code here that's going to call a property on it. Um, and I'm going to copy that from. The sub object to PM. Which is
It um, doesn't look like that. Oh, it does. No, it doesn't. Value self session value. No, nope, that's value label again. Self and object. I'm going to call it data opt. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this locally in the configuration. So it's I'm going to call a, a function called get value. Pass it through session and we pass through the data pitch. Ah, we'll just pass to the data object because you can get the session from the data object and that just makes it a little simpler. We'll try and undef with nothing else happens. Everything else is inherited from the superclass. Then we're going to have to create a oh, get value function, get value property for this. Print because there's a field in ePrint. Um, Then hopefully now, I'm missing a comma. No. while making videos. Okay, I can test. Build you print camp style as invalid parameter. Doesn't like me just assigning random values. Let's find out what's happening. I think I sometimes make when I'm thinking about too many things at the same time. It's meta field. So this will give me a warning 
which is a shame. Um, oh, I can set a field default on this. Oh, no, that's handy. Let's do that. And we will edit This is a function. Field defaults. Hmm. Reset defaults. Why is field defaults recurring? Because I should be able to just push onto it. So in Aha, here we go. Subject does this. How does it do that? Oh, it defines it by defaults. So let's do that. So we need, it needs to be get value, doesn't it? So let's run test again. Good. So now test value runs. We have uh, we have this wide character warning because we're sending stuff, but it is set and and it is coming out. So the now why is it not coming out in uppercase? Did I get that wrong? Um, 
yeah, try an uppercase title. And what we're going to also do is we're going to change our render value to if it's set and we'll, we'll call this values coming in isn't it so I think we can just say if it's probably not the best way to do it what we wanted that it is set. Should just be able to say must be a bit cheeky. Is it? No, it must not be cheeky. Let's do a couple of reprints. It is set. Let's see if that thing works. Our test script, user share, reprints, tump, test value. So again, we have this wide character. This is, a, yeah, this is just Perl outputting. So this is rendering, this is saying it's set. And so now we have a, um, a virtual value, the value of which is derived. Now we can do anything here. Um, we can read combine field, read field, generate values on the fly. We can print what the current time is, uh, you know, anything we like. Um, and then when we're rendering, if we want this to render as, you know, a, a table or as a, a, you know, we just build it up with the with the DOM elements or use a, a citation that we call. Um, and that's that done. And finally, let's just fix this uh, wide character in UTF-8. Oop, where are we? Just share the prints. Dump. And that, oh, we've got two UD prints. Bin mode, still out. So if we run this again, it comes out fine. So here we have the render value, which uses the new git value. We've tested to see that the value actually is set and African elephants. Now, if we come back here, do you remember at the start of this process, we put caps title into this list that generates automatically, and then we added it by hand. Now, if I regenerate the abstract, if I generate uh, the abstract for number one, I've got an undefined phrase because uh, the 
part in the loop is looking for the phrase for the field name, which I haven't set, so you'd have to set that. But as you can see, this is the one I put in by hand, and this is the one in the loop now uh, that is being tested. Um, unfortunately, we had to create a new metadata field for that, but I think that was a useful thing to see. Um, this has certainly been my longest video today. I hope that at least some of you stayed to the end, and um, I'll, I'll see you next time.